Hello, I'm Ollie Jaeger, and this is the final whistle. Hello, and welcome back to the final whistle, brought to you by the Rugby Connection podcast. Well, it took the entirety of the show's running, but we're finally in Christchurch officially with our first ever Crusaders player. What better time to do it with Super Rugby season right round the corner? Making history with us today. He's actually from this part of the world. He played for Ireland age grade, played at the Leinster schools, but he's been tearing it up down under. He gets known as the Flying Bull. It's Ollie Yeager. Ollie, thank you so much for coming on. How are you getting on, mate? I'm now going good, mate. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. And like I said, you're you're a history maker. You're our first ever active crusader. So, oh well, I feel honoured. You should do. It's like uh, I don't know what it is. We've just never cracked Christchurch, but there you go. Oh, you've, I've seen you've done. Uh, you've had old Mikey Alato on there, so you've kind of you've halfway got it in here. But it's probably just a year too late. You probably he was already gone by then. Yeah, yeah, big lens of player when we got him, but yeah. kind of counted it. I kind of counted it, so you, you kind of count it. It, it, it. You can count it for as much as you want. I'm sure it'd be grand. <laughs> No, I'm sure we'll give you we'll give you the credit because you're you're still active at Crusader, so we'll give you the honors. Oh, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll rub it in his face and say, that, "Oh yeah, no, I'm the first one." Well, Mike was first Simone, so you could both share a title <laughs> there. So there you go. Oh, <laughs> there you go. I, I can't claim that one. No, no, definitely, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> um, first question: We ask all our guests this just to get the ball rolling. Um, what actually got you into rugby in the first place? Um, it was a few years ago, well, more than a few years ago now. I was probably about, I'd, be, I'd been playing rugby on and off when I was a kid, like four or five. I had a crack at it, gave it up for a wee bit. No, I didn't really like it. And then I had a, I was chucked into Gaelic football for a wee bit too and played a little bit of that. Didn't really like it either. And I was kind of, the way you want to put it, I was kind of a bit of a chubby kid growing up and Kind of my dad was a bit fed up with just me sitting at home playing PlayStation the whole time and just eating chips and crisps and all that kind of stuff. So he pretty much said, you got to play something. you got to pick one thing, play, and um, end up choosing rugby. And it took a while to get into it. So I kind of only really started playing full-time when I was, I would say, about 10. And even then, it was every couple of weeks on, every couple of weeks off. and then. But once I hit about 11, 12, it started really kicking in, and I really started enjoying it then. And actually, I think the whole point was like, I think I just got a little bit fitter and actually start enjoying the game because I could run around the pitch this time. But um, that was pretty much the, how I got into it. Um, not really one of these stories where I've always loved it since I was a kid. This certainly wasn't the case, but certainly grew to love it. It's, it's interesting that because I feel like I'm kind of on the same path as you. I what? It's never been football in the house. It was always rugby growing up. But yeah. I seen it on TV and I was like, I want to do that. And obviously because of like safety, at like seven, eight years old, you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't think I don't think for me it was the safety side of it. I think one major thing is that my dad was Dutch, my dad is Dutch. And of course, when you grow up in Holland, there is no rugby. So it was never really something that kind of he would have thought. He'd been living in Ireland and England for a wee bit before. Of course, and kind of got the hang of it and grew into, and grew to love it himself. But it was never really the first case sport to pick. So kind of in the same boat as such. Yeah, I mean, I didn't give. I think I tried so many hobbies before I got into rugby. I think I did dancing. I did. <laughs> I think I did taekwondo for a week, and somebody fought yeah. me. I didn't like it. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what else sticks out. I did I acting I, for a week, and then I, that didn't fit my boat so I had to go and back into rugby I was in a pipe band and then I didn't pan out there you go it's just yeah it's funny how it works isn't it it is it really is but I wouldn't regret it now I love talking about rugby yeah. I love what everything to do with that kind of thing yeah exactly it's, it is the best sport it is for everyone oh absolutely and I, I I just yeah as I said like I grew to love it and I wouldn't change anything anymore um I actually love the game and hopefully have a few more years still playing it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we've kind of got a, we've got a fan question that kind of links to the, the first question I've asked you. It's from Alfie Patterson. He's asked when 
you want when did you decide you wanted to play rugby? Um wanted to play rugby professionally or wanted to just play rugby? Um I'll, I'll kind of answer play. both. I'll answer yeah, both. Yeah. So when I first started, I kind of I were, I really wanted to start getting into rugby and playing it when I was saying like about 11, 12, just before I went to secondary school and stuff. I really started enjoying it and I started making a heap of friends through there, through the rugby club at home. And I really just started enjoying being out there and just playing. Um, obviously, when you play footy, especially when you're younger, you're always striving to be in the best team. And it definitely took me a few years to get into the first team. I was always floating around the C team, D team for a wee bit. Had the all odd, odd appearance in the Bs or something like that, but I was never really a first team player. And then, so I had, I loved it, but it was definitely wasn't my, you know, number one thing to do. But once I hit secondary school, then that all changed. Then it all came into, I started playing a little bit better. I started making more friends through it. And I just really started enjoying it more. And I find that, you know, it's not all. And then kind of learned throughout the years and only really recently, it's not really about the team you play for. It's more just everyone around you. And I figured that out a little bit younger as well with the friends I was making. It was just, I just knew then once I hit secondary school, I just wanted to play rugby. And that was a sport for me. And then I kind of professionally, I'd say halfway through secondary school, I kind of started taking it really seriously and um, really started to try to carve out a path in order to make it pro, as to say. Um, of course, you can't really bank on it because it's, it's a bloody hard thing to get into. And sometimes dominoes fall your way and you, they don't. And um, for me in Ireland, they didn't fall my way. And I guess it was a bit of a knock, but there's all, as uh, I guess, as my experience, there's always another opportunity somewhere else. And at the end of secondary school, I had an opportunity to come out here into New Zealand. And yeah, I've never looked back. And then that's really when I started having the eyes in the pro game and really wanting to have a crack at it and see how far I could go. I love that. You've actually kind of dwelled into more fan questions. It's like you could almost read what, what I've got written down. <laughs> um, the, the black jersey, he's kind of chucked in two questions with a third being like the main, but I'll just chuck yeah. them all out to you and see if, how you can answer however you want. So he's asked, why did you first go to New Zealand? Have you dreamed of being an all black? And then he's basically just said he just wants to know what your original plan was. So. There you go. Yeah. So I was in my last year in high school or secondary school. Um, basically, the, the whole way it kind of ended up is that I wanted to go to New Zealand to play rugby for a month or so because all my friends were going to Spain at the end of their exams and having and going out to party and stuff. And it was nearly the fact that I was a bit too late to actually organize that. And so I got to the point where everything had been booked up and there was no flights, no accommodation. And I was like, oh, well, I've got to do something. And so my dad and I, we were looking online and we found this um, site that actually let players come over uh, to play rugby in New Zealand and also get a job. And so originally the plan was to actually go work on a farm up in Auckland, in the Auckland region at the beginning. And so I had that all figured out and it was pretty much going to re I was good to go. Like everything was sorted and ready to go. And, but through, uh, so my dad was a strength and conditioning coach within the school. And through that, he obviously gets to know coaches and stuff. And through that, we met Tony Smith, who used to coach Trinity college. And he had a set of, pro well, he had been sending players on a program, which is the program I eventually went to, to Christchurch. And, you got to pay a small fee and you go and go play in the academy. So basically you train as an academy player within Christchurch. You play gate, like fitness games and skills with the actual academy players. And you go off and you play club footy in the weekends with whatever club you're assigned to. And so I had, we thought we might as well just throw that in there just in case. But the only problem was they had to be 18 to do it. And by the time I finished school, I was 17. So we didn't really have much hope. And we were just kind of banking on that Auckland go on the Auckland gig. And basically a couple of months before I finished school, we got an email back from Canterbury Rugby and saying that I'd been accepted into the course, that they made an exception 
for whatever reason, I think because I was turning 18 when I was there, that they said it would be fine. And so I decided to actually switch the roles and go down to Christchurch instead, so as I thought it was a better opportunity. Um, get to know the lifestyle in Christchurch, um, get to see it, because when I first came here, it had just been the earthquakes two years prior, so it was a kind of an interesting time in the city. And at the time, I know the Crusaders weren't playing very well, but they also had that history to them where it's the Crusaders. Everybody knows them if you know rugby, and who doesn't want to turn down an opportunity to just go see the facilities? So that's the reason why I came to Christchurch, came over here for a month and a half to play footy, and a month and a half turned into nearly 10 years now. So it's kind of one of those things is you see a heap of people over here. Um, what's it called? They come here for, they can be Scottish, English, Irish, no matter where you're from, they always come here for six months and ending staying 12 years. It's just such a nice country to come to. And um, yeah, that's how I wanted to come. And the other question was, so I've, I've gone on a rant there. I've forgotten about what the other question was. Um, have you dreamed of being an old black? Yeah, I won't lie. I have. Um, but the thing is, is that I also think is that in, if you play rugby professionally, and as I said earlier, you're always kind of striving for that better team. And better team is a meaning um, you go club team, then you go to provincial, super rugby, and then international. And... Yeah, look, I've been in New Zealand for a while now and it's pretty hard not to think, uh, not to dream about that. But then the thing is, is this obviously you need to get to that level first and that's the hardest thing to do. And so I'm open to whatever comes in the future, I say. Um, it's a hard thing to say because obviously I've got Ireland there as well, um, which I'm not saying I'm ever going to play for them or All Blacks, of course, but you know, there is other factors to playing international rugby than just playing for the international team. There's visas and all sorts of stuff. So I would say I've probably had more of a dream of playing international rugby than I've had playing for the All Blacks. I like that, I like that answer. I, I like that. Yeah. Um, obviously, because you play for Canterbury in the ITM or Bunnings or whatever it's called now. Yeah, Bunnings <laughs> MPC. Um, and of course the Crusaders. Do you get Do you get bored of winning? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think you can ever get bored of winning. I don't really think that's a possible outcome for any sort of well, no matter what you're doing. Sadly for Canterbury, we've had a bit of a rough streak the last couple of years. We lost in the final last year, of course, and a few years prior we went to the semi-finals and didn't even make playoffs for a couple of years, which was quite frustrating as a player in the team especially when I first started playing we were we won two in a row well I only won the last two but they had actually won seven in a row so far before me before my first years too so Canterbury hasn't gone exactly to plan but we're building and training in the right way that hopefully this year we can actually pull it out of the bag and go back onto the winning ways again but for Crusaders it's the top gig don't get me wrong it's a bloody hard competition but I don't we think you can get used to uh, winning. It's uh, definitely uh, an addictive feeling. Um, it's a really nice feeling, a beautiful feeling to have. But the only danger with that is, of course, when you start the next season, you've got a big mark on your back and everybody yeah. wants to have a, champ, uh, have a chomp at you. So, yeah, it just makes the rugby more interesting, I find. So everybody, whenever you play someone, it's going to make the games bigger, make the games harder. Um, it has a lot more spirit to the game so it actually in all ways I think it makes everything better so no I definitely can't get used to it oh <laughs> I cannot get used to it sorry I I, I get used to it. it's all good um how many super rugby titles do you have just because I kind of lose count when you because we look into obviously Scott Robertson is yeah. massive and I think because he was a player and he's now coach you have to try and like yeah. right you want that many there but then as the yeah. coach, and yeah, so I'm just going to have any super titles. Um, 18, 19, 20, I've got six. Ah, show off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you so six last. Like, you said it like yeah, so It's pretty easy because I've been so, I've been really fortunate that we've won every year since I've started playing for the Crusaders, so it's quite easy to track. Maybe, maybe it's you. Yeah, well, yeah, well, hopefully <laughs> this year. <laughs> Hopefully we keep it going. But, we, of course, then 
through the COVID period, we didn't have the Super Rugby. We only had the Super Rugby Aotearoa, yeah. so the New Zealand. So I'm counting them as well. I'm, right, I'm glad you've said that because that's another thing that we had an issue with because when you look at it, it's like Super Rugby, Super Rugby yeah. Pacific, Super Rugby Trans-Tasman, Super Rugby Aotearoa. I'm like, do they all count or is that... Yeah, well, we count them all. <laughs> you count them all, right? That's, that's what, like, now I know how to count it going yeah. forward. It's fine. If Crusaders players count them all, we're counting them then, all. Yes, then you just count them all. It's easy yeah. way to do it. Easy. But yes, six tick, that's just, that's insane. It's pretty, as I said, pretty fortunate to be part of this team. And yeah, no, it's been hopefully just onwards and upwards and keep going now. Just stack them all up. Just yeah, keep just, have a, just keep it going. I don't want to stop. You you start in, is it two weeks, the season starts? So we have what? a last pre-season yeah. game this weekend, and then we have our first um, round competition next week against the Chiefs. Oh, excited. I can't, I just can't wait. I, I, I love Super Rugby because I know this might tell you that I'm a Crusaders fan, but yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just love watching Super Rugby. I'm not affiliated to like any team. I can just sit back, enjoy it, Yeah. regardless yeah. of who's playing, regardless of the result. And I'm like, oh, that's so good. I might have to be yeah. a bit more biased to Crusaders now because of your good self. But well, I, 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 I hope so. I, 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 mm, I actually think about it I probably am a Crusaders fan just because growing up you had like Dan Carter Richard McCaw Kieran Reid yeah and obviously I always seen them at all black levels so when you see them at Crusaders I'm like oh well this is this is yeah. my team now yeah well that's that's kind of how I started I kind of grew up when I was in high school I always had a affinity towards the Crusaders it was always I remember talking to my dad heaps of times driving because I went to boarding school and every time I went home he would obviously drive us drive us back and I always remember talking to my dad driving on the way from home to school and always talking about, like, what if I could play for the Crusaders? Just, why not? It was always a why not. It was never, you can't do it. It was always, why couldn't you? And yeah. I always thought in the back of my head, oh, Jesus, this is only chat. This is only, you know, something to lift my spirits and, you know, be hopeful for. But, yeah, he was right. You know, there, if, there's a, if, if there's a will, there's a way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Could not agree more with that. When, and we're going to chuck it back a little bit. When you played age grade for Ireland, was there any noticeable names that was in that team with you? Just for our viewers that might not know you yep. personally. So I played age grade in 2013 um, for Ireland 18s. And there was a few players in there. So we had, I'm trying to think now, so Jeremy Lockman, who plays for Munster. He yeah. just played for Ireland last year. We had Nick Timoney. Um, Ross Byrne. Um, who else was there? I don't want. To, I don't really want to leave anybody else. Billy Dardis was in the team, so he's the captain of the sevens. Okay, cool. Ireland sevens, so he was playing in that team. Um, who else? I'm trying to think. There's been, I think, as an international level, that's probably been James Ryan. He was in there. That's another one. Um, I think internationally, that's probably the. The, all of them, but there's definitely been a few players in those in that squad that actually went on and played professionally on some sort of level. So yeah. it's it was a decent team back then. That sounds it just but just based off those five or six and then including yourself as well. Because that's yeah. like well, yeah. I'm trying to think because James and Ross especially play for months uh, for Leinster and they just win titles like you do for Crusaders. I so know tomorrow. Club, club level, there's at least Oh, uh, if we're talking okay. club level, there were there. There's, I think there's there was even a heap more. I think a lot of boys had to stop or retired in some sort of way for either injuries and whatnot. But we had like Oshin Heffernan, who's in the team. He played for Northampton. Um, we had Harrison Brewer. Uh, he's he played a little bit for Leinster, I think, and then came over to New Zealand to play NPC. Um, Jesus, I'm trying to think of everyone else. It feels like so bloody long ago now. <laughs> no, but like just off like you, James Ryan and Ross Burton, there's about 18 titles there. Just at club uh, level. And then you've got Yeah. But it's not a bad we staff. It's, it's, it's not too bad. <laughs> it's not too bad. It's definitely it's definitely been worse. 
Yeah, there's, there's a lot worse, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's, well, you kind of already dwelled on the, the aims for the upcoming season, but I'll ask, what's your personal aims for this season? So, this season's a bit of a rough one for me because at the end of the season last year, um, I end up having to actually have surgery on my neck. So I've had a spinal fusion and so I've had some vertebrae fused together. Um, it's quite a common injury apparently for our own front rowers. So it's a good thing to hear that it's um, a lot of boys actually come back and play from it. So it's not too bad in that sense. But the only thing is because I've had the surgery for the majority of this Super Rugby season, I probably won't be involved with it in playing sense of the word. So hopefully towards the end of the season, like around knockouts or something, I'll be able to, there's an opportunity maybe, depending on how the healing goes, um, in order to come back and play for those last few round games and hopefully the knockouts, if we can make it. But for me, it's more about getting back on the park, getting back playing. And then the main season for me, obviously, would be the Canterbury season because that would be the one I'll be involved with throughout the whole time. So winning that NPC is a big thing for me, and I really want to get back into that. I love that. Ho- hopefully that all, all happens. I didn't realise you had... Yeah, uh, it, it hasn't been... That, like it's, I think it's been announced once, but it's been more kept under wraps, I think. Not for any reason as such. It's just more... Because uh, it happened so late at the end of the season that by the time I actually had surgery, season was done. So it was kind of everything was finished. So right. there was we'll see how things go but hopefully not too much longer a couple more months and I'll be back on the park and see how things go Fing- fingers crossed anyway that's what, that's what we want to hear yeah um, we've got one more just before we change up a little bit and go into something different what is your dream front row partners so we've got you starting you can pick any hooker past and present you don't have to play with them past Anyone and present past and present and also for your your loose head as well. Oh, that's a good question. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, as the loose head, I would probably want to be scrumming with, um, thinking back, would be Andrew Sheridan. Old English prop. I remember watching him growing up. He was a tough nut. And he was definitely someone you didn't want to mess with. And he was one hell of a big bastard too. So he'd be a pretty guy, good guy up in the front row with you. And then as hooker, I would have to say... I'm thinking I'm probably have to gonna go throw it right back and say someone like Keith Wood. Oh nice. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice. kind of keep it from home and all that kind of stuff and see how he would have go. He seems like he would have been a wee nugget and gotten into his got his head into some dark places. So I think that would have been a pretty cool front row to scrum be scrumming with. Nice. You, and you can pack present as well. You can get one from each oh, okay. I, with, with the present, I'll do one for present then as well. Um, I'm going to keep it quite cheesy. I'm going to stay Joe Moody and Cody Taylor because I know those two work very well. And they're, they're very good at what they do as well. It's so. not a bad front row partnership, that's for sure. I mean, they've got six, at least six anyway, that we know of. Yeah, yeah so. exactly. So it's Even within our squad, it's tough to pick a good front row. Like, obviously... There's a heap of good front rows, but I'm meaning isn't a good front row to pick. So we have so many talented front rows, and obviously boys have gone on to represent New Zealand in different ways and stuff like that. So yeah, it's a tough one to pick, but those are probably two my two front rows, I'd say. So the question is now: Would you have which one would you start? Would you have your past starting or your present starting? One of them just will for, the bench, but... just for experience, experience and how I know they work, I'd say start with the presence because I know how they feel and I know how to scrum with them. But for purely entertainment value and um, just experience of actually having to be scrum with them, I would have, I'd probably pick the other two. Fair enough. I mean, you have to go the full 80, though. That's uh... <laughs> I've played the full 80 once and it just doesn't last very well with us big boys anymore. <laughs> You get pretty shot by the end of those last 75 minutes. Just keep scrumming. <laughs> it just, you just make you test, get yourself to the next scrum, and that's the main thing. No, I've played I've played front row once, maybe twice, and never again. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I, wouldn't, I, mean, I wouldn't want to play anywhere else in front row anymore. I mean, they, I've never been good at positioning because I've never had to do it. 
And then yeah. they were play- we were playing a weaker team, shall we say. Yeah. And I'm like, right, we'll start you against them because even if you don't do well, it's against a weaker side, so it's not you should be fine. Yeah. I still got I got lifted up in the scrum. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, no, this isn't for me. <laughs> I can tell you there's not one front row in the world who hasn't been lifted up once, at least once. It's it's called getting your wings. So once you get your wings, you never want to get them again. No, don't, no, you're right. I don't want to get them my wings again. <laughs> no, 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 no. Once you've had your wings, you you do everything you can in order for that not to happen again. I think that was actually my last game. I've just never played again since. So <laughs> <laughs> just drove you away from it. I, there was a lot going off off field as well, but yeah, it was just getting lifted in the scrum, just getting absolutely bitched, really. Like yeah. The, the scrum collapsed and I could just feel all the way on my shoulder, like the whole pack on my one arm. And I'm like, this isn't fun. Like, this is not enjoyable at all. Well, I think it's probably the most enjoyable part of the game. You probably, yeah, you, you've probably, you've, <laughs> you've, craft, you've mastered your craft. I, I kind of got chucked in on a Tuesday training <laughs> session for a Saturday game. So. Oh, well, uh, the more you keep at it, the more you can learn it. So I wouldn't say, I should say you should go back and at least try it one more time. Well, maybe we'll need, we'll need to find a, a different club entirely. Though, cause... <laughs> Just can't go back to the same one. <sighs> nah, there's, if you're from that town, they'll look after you. If you're not from that town, they don't care. All right. Well, that's pretty much how it goes everywhere then, really. Pretty much, yeah. But it was yeah. just... They made it out there like, oh, well, we're one team, so so we're all good. And then as soon as I had a problem, they're like, I'll suck it up, basically. I'm like, no. Yeah, yeah. No, I know exactly how you're saying. Is this, it's just club funny, pretty much. Take after your own, look after your own, and go after the rest. Pr- pretty much, yeah. But, oh, well, we'll, we'll move on. It's been over a year, so. so <laughs> I've just generally not played like this season at all, so. <laughs> it's all good um, we're going to go into something totally different now it's getting to know you more as a person than as a rugby player yep um, favourite I say style of food like food cuisine Irish what would, what would be Irish like steak pie and stew Irish stew um, like shepherd's pie um, you know all that kind of short Guinness of course, oh, yeah, that, that that would have to be. There's nothing or Sunday roast, Sunday or Sunday breakfast. You know, get the black pudding, white pudding, bit of a um, white pudding. I still never uh, had white pudding. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of the white pudding. Black pudding is definitely my jam. Definitely, I'd definitely have way more black pudding than white. But I'm not going to say no to it if it's offered on my plate. I'll put it that way. There's red pudding as well, but I don't know what that is. I've never heard of it. I've never heard of a red pudding before. I feel like that's more a chip shop thing. I've never seen it anywhere else. There's just a local chip shop that does like a black pudding supper, white pudding supper, or red pudding. I'm like, well, what's that? God knows. God mm. knows. I'm, I'm, I'll stick to the black myself. There you go. <laughs> um, Favourite pizza topping? It's going to be controversial, but I have to say Hawaiian. I knew as soon as you said the word controversial, I'm saying, no. I thought I thought you'd be different because every no. time every time we get someone from Australia or New Zealand in, they say, yeah, pineapple on pizza, and uh they would also do pineapple on burgers, which it's actually really good. I'm gonna have, I will pineapple have to try just it. makes everything a lot better, I can say it that way. It's <laughs> pineapple is hard to not go with something. Fair enough. I'm, at this point, I'm going to have to try it. I keep it in purely because they all say yeah. They, everyone, yeah. They, everyone on that side of the world says, yeah, absolutely. But up here, it's, yep. no, it doesn't. <laughs> yep, no, pineapple for sure. Fair. I, I will probably give it a go at some point. But it has to be like a high-end, classy burger, not not a cheapy one because I feel like oh, uh, you can get there's definitely you've got the fish and chips here uh, they sell burgers Hawaiian burgers and it's just an easy bun beef patty Hawaiian 
um, oh, Hawaiian is in pineapple ring and the old bun on top and probably one of the best burgers you can have. Do you grill the pineapple or do you just chuck it on? Uh, you can either or. Either or. I prefer grilled. Grilled. Okay. Fair enough. Where is your dream holiday or vacation destination? Japan. Nice. Never been. I've always wanted to go. I've always wanted to see what Tokyo is like and the countryside in Japan. Taste sushi. Um, just see the different and quirky stuff they have in those cities and all that kind of stuff. So Japan, for sure. Like, like the singing toilets and all that. Far no, less. the B-Days. The B-Days, so you don't have to wipe yourself. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Press a button and it does it all itself for you. Exactly. That's the main thing. <laughs> um, what is your go-to... I say post-match drink, but it's more... You've just had a big win. You and the boys are out on the town. What are you drinking? Oh, beer, for sure. Can I have a pint of beer? But if you go and then to specifics on what type of beer, I'd probably have to say a pint of Asahi or a pint of um, Spate, which is a New Zealand beer, which yeah. is a um, I've never had a popular one up here. You can't get Spates over here. Or it's, it's bloody good. Yeah. It's bloody good. I'll, I'll, not, I'll quite try Guinness standard, not quite Guinness standard, but it's good. No, Guinness is the top tier. I love. Yeah. I never used. To, I never used to like it, and it wasn't until funny. we went. It's funny here because when what's it called? You have heaps of people here because Guinness is Guinness here isn't nearly as good as it would be at home. But when people actually go to Ireland and have a taste of it, they realise, oh shit, this is actually quite nice. This stuff. Yeah. I've never been to Ireland, so I've, I've, I've still never tried it properly. Oh, well, then, then you know you're going this summer. Oh, well, there we go. It's all sorted. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> but no, I, I never used to like it, and my dad always drinks it. And we went out for, like, for the rugby once, and I was just, I smelled it, and I was like, no, oh, nah, I'm not drinking that. He's like, just drink it. He's like, don't smell it. Just knock it back. I was like, right, okay. I was like, oh, actually, that's quite nice. And I've been on yeah. it ever since. It's like, don't knock it till you try it. Pretty much. And it, it just goes down really, really smooth. It shouldn't, yeah. but it definitely does. It does. It's 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 bloody beautiful. It is. It is. And you, I could already tell a bad one from a good one. And I've not even been to Ireland yet. <laughs> yeah, well, wait till you get to Ireland. It's bloody gorgeous. But sometimes when you have a like a big win and stuff, I guess... You can actually think about like the last thing you do want is a beer, uh, just because you can be so sore and mm. stuff. And so on days like that, there's nothing can beat actually one of the best drinks I think you can have after a game. There's nothing can beat just a decent full fat Coca Cola. Yeah, it's fair. So yeah. what what spirits do you like? We, we we love a drink on on Rugby Connection. So, um, I wouldn't say I'm a big spirits man really. Um. I guess I would have a glass of whiskey every now and again, but I wouldn't say um, I'm a big spirits man as such. Kind of, especially through the season, I try to keep myself pretty healthy as such. You know, you don't want to throw it off because if you have a big night on the beers or whatever, you kind of end up re regretting it two days later because it takes longer to recover. But yeah, I've, I don't mind a whiskey every now and again, but it definitely. I would definitely wouldn't be going straight to the spirits cabinet before anything else. <laughs> That's fair. Fair enough. Um, cats or dogs? Dogs. That's an easy choice. It's global. Yeah I've, yeah, I've got two of them, so I can't say anything else. There you go. <laughs> the rules are rules, that, and they're listening as well. So <laughs> They decide to when they want to listen, really. <laughs> it's like children, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, don't have any of them, so I don't too sure. Well, I don't have any dogs, but yeah, so yeah, they're the same. <laughs> I'm sure it'd be the same kind of thing. Kind of is. The problem is, you probably tell them, you probably tell your dogs not to do something and they'll do it. And then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly that is. If you had to play in the backs for one game, what position would you play? Probably inside centre. Just crash it up crash it up and then that's all you have to do because I wouldn't be any I wouldn't be any good on defence in the back line I see the yeah. game sometimes and I just wonder how the hell can they even know where things are going with those strikes off a scrum or a line out 
No, no, I thought about like that. Yeah, yeah. Veg- yeah. So, yeah veg- and then, yeah. and then wingers and fullbacks run too much, so I wouldn't ke- have a chance with those boys. Fair, fair enough. Yeah, but you're, you get nicknamed the Flying Bill, so we need you on the wing. Yeah. Well, I, I personally, I actually don't know where that nickname's come from. I've heard of it before. I've heard people call me it, and I understand that it's on the Wikipedia page where it's on my name, but. Honestly, I have no clue who's given it to me, and I don't know where the hell it's from. I was going to say that's where we that's where we got it when when you announced that you were coming on. I was like, I always try and like maybe not invent nicknames because some of them are like that's always yeah. like like if we had someone from Holland, it's the Flying Dutchman, it's it's yeah, or the Dutch Destroyer or something like that. And yeah. I was like. What the hell do we give you your nickname? And then I went to look you up just to write down some questions. And it he, he is known as the Flying Bill. I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I said, I've had a few people call it me. Uh, not many, not many at all, but there's been a few. And yeah, I'm unsure where it's come from, but it's come from somewhere. And I, I think it's come from in one of my, in my inside circle. I think someone's trying to have a gag at me and trying to, Start something that's not meant to be started. I mean, there there is worse nicknames out there. To be fair, so yeah, yeah, that is true. I I would take it. No, I'm not. I'm not saying I'm not going to take it. I'll happily have it, but I'm just I don't understand where it's come from. So it's something I have to look up and try figure it out myself. We'll we'll do the rounds on on the internet and just find out where where the origins <laughs> from. Oh, thanks. <laughs> that's if they own up to it. I will, we'll we'll find out somehow, some one yeah. way or another. We'll find out. Um, do you have any tattoos? I don't. Would you ever have any tattoos? <laughs> oh, just never really thought about it. I eh? just it's never really crossed my mind to get one, and I th- maybe sometime in the future I might get one. Um, I'm unsure, but at the moment I don't really see the need for them, or I don't. I don't really want one. There's nothing driving me yet to go get it. So, um, no, nah, I'm pretty happy how it is. Fair enough. You can always get a bill with wins. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your favourite um, song or, like, style of music? Um, I've got quite a r- wide range of um, music. I would have to say kind of more, I'm, I'm definitely more on the rock side of things. Um, I quite like Red Hot Chili Peppers. Nice. Um, but I'm bit, uh, quite an ACDC fan, but one thing, one there's one there's one band I've been listening to at the moment, and it's a Mongolian band, and they're called The Who. Uh, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting listen. It's a mix of kind of, um, I would say, hard rock and Mongolian throat singing. Okay, I don't know how, where to start on that one, but fair enough. Well, it, it's one of those ones you have to need to look up yourself. I don't know how I came across it, but it's definitely a band I've been listening to the last the last wee bit, uh, uh, quite a bit. And they're called the Who. The Who, the uh, the Who. I think it's in. I think it's just H U. The Who. I was going to say there's got to be some like copyright impeachment there. No, nah, because I think I think it's in Mongolian. I, 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 honestly, I don't even know what they're saying in the music. So it's one of those things. That actually, I just like to to hear it. So I, I have no idea what they're saying, and I don't know if it means anything or not. But I just know they're a good band. That's fair. That's that's what music's about, though. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, favorite film. I was asked this the other day, actually. You think it'd be right in the top of my head too. Um, I'd have to say probably one of my favourite ones would be Goodwill Hunting. A classic, yeah. Yeah, I'd like that. Um, Seven, starring Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman. Oh That's yeah, a pretty yeah. decent one. Um, more recently though, I would say I have to say I'm a quite a I'm a, I'm a fan of the old. Um, uh, Lord of the Rings movies. They're not my thing, but I get why a lot of people yeah, love them. No, I'm I'm a big fan of them, and I don't mind the old Harry Potter movie either. I have to say, I'll I'll I'm prefer more Harry Potter than Lord of the Rings, but I mean they yeah. are both classics. 
Yeah. No, I've, I, they would probably, but I have to say, my probably my favourite one is definitely Goodwill Hunting. Good. That's a good choice. And the reason I keep that in is nobody ever has the same answer. Yeah. Well, it's it's just one of those things. It's such a wide range of movies you can choose from that, of course, everybody's probably going to have a different answer from that because there's, there's so many tastes out there. You just never know what someone's going to say. Some of them will catch me off guard, like like yourself there with Goodwill Hunting. Don't, it's not like it's a well known film, but I just don't. Like, I always assume what people would say. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's not the one that's going to people. It's definitely not a movie that you have the tippy tongue. I'd say it's not one thing you got. Oh, fancy of watching Goodwill Hunting this this weekend. It's yeah. kind of one of those ones you flick through Netflix and you remember it's a movie and you're like, oh yeah, that's really good. Yeah. But no, that's some of the best ones though when you when you scroll through and oh yeah that's available what's, what's that yeah no, it is definitely if there was going to be a film on your life who would you have playing you in the film I guess there's a couple of different ways you can answer this if I want someone who I would like to depict as me. In the most flattering tense, I would probably have to say someone like Daniel Craig, you know, just, you know, chip chisel pretty well, looks good, you know, a bit of a younger version, though, probably have to be a bit nicer, but not the old version he is now, but probably, you know, Casino Royale, Daniel Craig would have been pretty nice. But if you want someone who actually looks like me, you're probably going to have to go towards someone like probably Seth Rogen. <laughs> I'll, I can meet you in the middle though, because you will. I can give you the like the flair of Daniel Craig with the bulk. Yeah, feel, we'll, 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 we'll have it that way. I think his name is, is it Mark Strong. He's um he's in he's in the Kingsman, the guy with the got the. I th- I feel like he's quite he's quite a a muscular guy. So if you grow a beard, I could yeah. see him. Oh. Well, we'll just settle it for The Rock, shall we? We'll just say he he's most he looks the most like me, and we'll just keep it at that. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> we'll go for that, yeah. Why not? Yeah. You're the guest. <laughs> You're the guest. Yeah. So, yeah, The Rock will play Ollie Yeager in the film. <laughs> he probably would. If you took oh. him, if you him up, enough money out of him, you would. So. Yeah, well, um, yeah, well, we'll see. I'll... I'll I would say he would if he chucked it off money on him, but it'd probably be one of those ones you have to convince him to do. There's more money then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's always everyone's got the price, isn't it? Just how many zeros? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I certainly don't <laughs> <Yeah>. have enough. <laughs> yeah, same. Um, the weirdest thing you've ever eaten. Weirdest thing I've ever eaten. Um I would probably have to say when I was younger, we were on, um, it was initiation night for my club team and they made us eat a tin of cat food. Oh. So uh, among other things, but that was probably the worst one to have. Yeah, that, yeah, no, that, that just sounds grand. Yeah, well, you don't really think it straight when you've been put in the ringer after a big season and it's initiation day. So you kind of have to just roll with the punches that way. But um, there's definitely been out there. There's definitely been worse from what I've heard. And I understand people definitely have some strange tastes, but that would probably be the weirdest thing. I'm not saying I enjoyed it, but it's probably the weirdest (laughs) thing I've eaten. Fair enough. Who are you beating in this year's Super Rugby final? (laughs) <laughs> um, I'll switch the question up a little bit and I'll say who would I like to play in the Super Rugby final um, I would probably have to say the Blues again Fair enough just because yeah. it, it it's the big New Zealand rivalry um, I think there's a, honestly I think every game we have with everybody it's a big rivalry but I think with the, how the Blues have been Tracking the last couple of years, um, they've certainly gotten one hell of a team themselves. Um, I just think it would be an 
His last year's final was awesome to be part of. It was an after, one of probably the best and the coolest game I've ever played. But to have that experience again, but have it in Christchurch would be certainly something I would really want. Do you have to finish top of the table to get the final then? Yeah, is that how it works? No. So uh, honestly, I'm not too sure. If it's the same as last year, we have a quarter final, semi final, and then final again. Yeah. So I, I, I think it's the top eight or the top six or whatever the quarter final, which is top eight, go through and then it's 1v8, 2v7, 3v, and so on and so forth. Yeah. I don't know how they decide the final then. I'm not, I'm not complaining. I feel like if it's an all-New Zealand final, it should be in Eden Park. But that's just... Yeah, but then that's Auckland's home ground. We'd rather have it in Crosses. I know. I, I don't agree with... I don't like teams playing in a national stadium either. I feel like that's just for it should just be for the international team. Yeah. But that's yeah. But then you have the same excuse with old Leinster and Aviva. So yeah. There's a it feels like we've got you probably think we've got like some vendetta against the Crusaders and Leinster. We don't. We know no, that they're very good. It's I just have, we do yeah, predict yeah, no, absolutely not. But it's just just you know how things work sometimes. You just some teams, if you're going to have a bigger crowd, why not put it in a bigger stadium as such? I suppose I don't know. It's just a very weird one for me because I'm like, I get why you would do it, and maybe like as a one-off. I mean, like I mean, like regularly, don't play in the national stadium is what I was I think I was more meaning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like the boys have been doing it. Play that yeah. part. Well, they've been doing it for years, and I guess there's no real when you come to gym and there's. Yeah, you could say Eden Park's probably the national stadium, but there's so many stadiums in New Zealand that the All Blacks play in that you can't really pin them to one. Of course, Eden Park is synonymous with the All Blacks, but you have obviously the one in Wellington, can't remember the name, Caketon. Then you have the one in Hamilton. Jeez, I can't even remember the names of them. The one in Hamilton, Dunedin. You have all these teams that have these stadiums or international stadiums, so... Pretty much every team's playing in an international stadium at the moment. That's, it might, might might just be me being like Northern Hemisphere because obviously like clubs have their own little stadium, and then like yeah. Scotland plays at Murrayfield, England plays at Twickenham. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's just that. I would say it's just because back at home, like obviously you have Leinster, where I grew up, you have like they used to have Donnybrook. Like they still use it a wee bit now, but Donnybrook RDS. You have Munster and Thomond, which is sometimes used, but it's mainly seen as Munster play Sports Grand and King's Home. You know, it's all these stadiums that they've had times over how many years they've been here in order to set up themselves and stuff. And I guess in New Zealand, they just these teams haven't been around long enough in order to actually set up a base of their own place. Because I think Crusaders is only, I don't even know if they're 20 years old yet. So, kind of thing. So, it's kind of one of these. It's an, it's, it's, oh, no, they will be. The 95, 2005, 10, Yeah, no, they would be. Sorry, they're nearly 30 years old, actually. They're probably. I think they're actually 27. I think they're 27. I was meant to say 30. But you know what I mean? You have Leinster yeah. and all these teams who have been here for over 100 years. And then Crusaders are nearly about to crack 30. So, it's just the. I think it's the history to do with the teams rather than the actual facilities. I probably never really looked into it until like how like how you've just said it. I think it's more just like on like paper when you read it. I'm like, why are you playing in a national stadium? <laughs> yeah, I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But if it is a home stadium, it has always been. It's kind of hard to change. Yeah, no, that's that's fair. Oh, yeah, that's a, a good explanation on that. Yeah. Final question for you for you today, Ollie. Um. One thing you'd like to be remembered for? Um, obviously, like you have guys who want to be remembered for their rugby games or their career or stuff. But personally, I'd like to. I'd always like to be remembered as just being a nice guy. I'd always just remembered. I'd. You have. I would obviously would love a very fruitful rugby career. But if I end up being at the end of my career or at the end of my days. And the one thing people remember me by is actually he was a real genuine kind dude. I think I've fulfilled what I wanted to do and I'll be very happy with that. 
Oh, I, I like that. I could vote for you being a being a nice guy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> just and that's just based off like a quick half hour, forty five minute yeah. discussion. Yeah. Oh no, thanks very much. Yeah, so that's probably the that's probably how I'd want to be remembered. That's probably the main thing I'd say. Yeah, no, I I love that, and the book is now closed. You've absolutely smashed it. You've answered every question and given a lot of de- detail into your career and you as a person and it's all great <laughs> perfect thank you very much for having me on it has been awesome no worries and hopefully get see you very soon in the in a crusader's jersey if not definitely a canterbury jersey yeah yeah so yeah hopefully fingers crossed and then everything will be all good and heal well but we'll just have to wait and see and get uh title number seven <laughs> i'm definitely aiming for it there you go but it's been an absolute blast you're welcome back anytime and yeah I I feel like I could just end up boring you with saying thank you over and over again you're all good I'll just say that but thank you very much Uh, it's been really cool to be on the podcast and stuff and yeah thanks for having me it's been real real awesome I'm glad you've enjoyed it this has been the final whistle with Ollie Yeager and we'll see you next time